tonight on DC News Now at 9. Possible school shooting plots thwarted. I'm, I'm just glad they got him. Nobody's safe. It's very, very sad. A Rockville student charged after police say they found a 129-page manifesto detailing plans to shoot up Wooten High School, the disturbing writings, and what the accused student's classmates are saying about him. And a ransomware attack on a D.C. government agency. What we know about the extortion efforts and how a cybersecurity expert is weighing in. Plus, a child pulled from a burning car in Maryland. Now, more than a week later, his family gets to thank the hero who saved him. Thank you for everything you have done. And a dangerous close call at Reagan National Airport. The feds investigating after two planes almost collide on the runway. Hi everyone, dragging some rain as we go into your Friday, but a warm up for the weekend. Details coming up. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight for DC News Now at 9 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. You are taking a live look right now at Reagan National Airport. Tonight, the FAA is looking into a dangerous close call between two planes on the runway there. Our Northern Virginia reporter, Max Marcilla, joining us live tonight from National. And Max, it appears to be a really close call. Well, Chris, it really was, and you're about to hear what that sounded like. The moments where a Southwest flight that was taxiing and a JetBlue flight ready for takeoff nearly collided. Stop. 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 We stopped. We were cleared to cross runway four. And we stopped the JetBlue 1654. Two planes seemingly on a collision course, narrowly avoiding each other as both came to a stop before maneuvering away. Tonight, the FAA is looking into what happened 741 Thursday morning. The JetBlue flight 1554 on its way to Boston delayed nearly six hours. The airline saying it inspected the plane before it eventually took off. This comes after efforts by some members of Congress to add flights to Reagan National, but it's been opposed by many of our region's politicians. In a joint statement after today's near crash, Senators Tim Kaine and Mark Warner say DCA's overburdened runway is already the busiest in the country, and we fear that adding more flights could put passenger safety at serious jeopardy. And tonight, both airlines are cooperating with that federal investigation. Initially, the FAA says an air traffic controller told the Southwest plane to cross the runway while the JetBlue flight was starting its takeoff roll. Live at Reagan National, Max Marcella, DC News Now. All right, just in now at 9 o'clock, the National Museum of American History here in Washington on high alert after receiving a bomb threat. The Smithsonian says someone called in that threat around 5.30. The museum was already closed to the public. Staff evacuated and officers did a full sweep of the building. Nothing was found. That investigation is being handled by U.S. Park Police and D.C. Police. All right, now to those disturbing threats of mass violence in Montgomery County. Police say they prevented a Wooden High School student from carrying out a school shooting. That 18 year old arrested after officers found an alleged manifesto outlining how he would shoot up the school. Randy Bass is in Rockville with the latest. Again, some viewers may find the following details disturbing and upsetting. Officers tell us today that they had the 18 year old on their radar for at least a month before taking him into custody last night. Police tell us that they were tipped off to the manifesto he'd been working on, what he called his memoir or his book. As I walk through the hallways, I cherry pick the classrooms that are the easiest targets. Those chilling words written in Alex Ye's 129 page manifesto. Words police say laid his plans for a school shooting at Wooten High School. Ye, whom students say is transgender, claims the book is a work of fiction. He also went on to write, quote, I have also considered shooting up my former elementary school because little kids make easier targets, end quote. Court documents point to a pattern of homicidal and suicidal ideation over the last year and a half. Ye had been in and out of institutions and hospitals receiving mental health care. In his writings, police say he wrote about how it would bring him great satisfaction and joy to kill. As early as 2022, he allegedly told counselors at Wooten High School of his plans to, quote, shoot up the school. James Chen is a senior. He says he had class with the accused when they went by the name Andrea. I, I never really knew her, but like 
it seemed like to me like it seemed to her like she was just a quiet person and a nice person. I, it was really unexpected. A Wooten freshman we talked to today said she was in sixth period when she heard the news. I was in shock. I did not know what to say because when you hear about these things going around at schools, you never expect it to actually happen to you. Other neighbors feeling relieved but still on edge. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just glad they got him. Nobody's safe. It's very, very sad. Yeah, those court documents we got a hold of today reveal police actually went to visit the teenager at Suburban Hospital where he had been receiving mental health care. They went there last month to try to talk to him and he declined to speak with them as part of their investigation. We do know police are planning to hold an additional press conference tomorrow to release new details in the case. In Rockville, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now. Well, developing now at nine, a D.C. government agency is a target of a ransomware attack. Hackers are threatening to release sensitive data tomorrow if their demands are not met. Our Daniel Hamburg live in Northeast tonight, D.C. Department of Insurance Securities and Banking. Daniel, this has to be unnerving for so many people. Yeah, Chris, the department tells me that Tyler Technologies, which hosts some of its data, experienced a data breach re re uh, relating to securities data. Now, an, uh, they discovered unauthorized access to their cloud system that stores DISB's client data. And according to Venari X, a company that monitors global security incidents, the attack may have exposed personal information such as first and last names, confidential business data, and email addresses. Screenshots reviewed by DC News Now shows an upload to an unknown website from a threat actor called Lockbit 3.0 last Saturday, April 13th, threatening to release hundreds of gigabytes of financial documents if a deal wasn't met by tomorrow. An updated notice says, quote, a bad negotiator disappeared at the end of the deal, so we are starting to release huge amounts of sensitive data, starting with a one gigabyte sample data. It goes on to threaten releasing 800 gigs of documents from the DC DISB, SEC, and Delaware banking institutions. The hacker said if the deal isn't finalized by next Tuesday, quote, brace for economy impact. I talked with the cybersecurity expert about that impact. It's the Department of Insurance, um, so they'll have, you know, information from business insurance as well as personal insurance throughout the district. Um, you know, there's a lot of tax documents and stuff I'm sure that will be included in this type of dump. Um, but really what ends up being the most damaging uh, are the emails and stuff that are leaked. Now, Tyler Technologies says they actually discovered an unauthorized breach of one of their systems back in March, and they shut that down. But they say the threat actor actually took out that encrypted the system and took the data out. The expert we talked with says people in D.C. should be worried about potential impacts of their Social Security numbers, email addresses, date of birth and address being leaked. We're live in Northeast. Daniel Hamburg, D.C. News Now. All right, Daniel, thanks. Meanwhile, let's get a first check on the forecast. Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb and Janessa, we saw Daniel and Max out there. Not a bad evening, pretty mild out. Yeah, no coat, right? Uh, really, we're seeing uh, some very warm air uh, this afternoon. Saw places across the DMV into the upper 70s, lower 80s. Tonight, there is a chill that starts to make its way in overnight into the start of your Friday. And we're talking about the middle 40s. They're going to return due to the shift of our winds coming out of the east. At this point, they're on the lighter side, five to 10 miles per hour, but they will start to pick up a bit as this next uh, kind of frontal passage makes its way in inches closer to the DMV. Right now, 64 degrees for DC metro area. It is a lot cooler for An Annapolis into Anne Arundel County. And then the farther west she goes, I mean, today, a very mild day for Kaiser Cumberland, uh, touching 80 uh, this afternoon. Here's that approaching storm system. Uh, really, the heavy duty stuff is out towards uh, Chicago and will make its way into Indiana. Indiana. Uh, that storm system is bowing out, causing that severe weather to pick up across that region, but it has a ways to travel uh, before it makes its way into our region. Tomorrow, it will be a lot cooler in some sections of the DMV with a few raindrops making its way into our region. It's not impressive rain, but we do definitely need to time it out. Some of those raindrops will be impactful for your evening commute. I have the details coming up. Okay, Janessa, we'll see you then. Thanks. In Virginia, a deadly motorcycle crash causes big backups during the evening rush hour. You're looking at traffic camera here in I-395 in Arlington. The crash happened just before 5 this evening near exit 8. Now, according to state police, a motorcyclist was thrown off the bike after running off the road and hitting a guardrail. Lanes were shut down for hours. They've since reopened. 
Since the start of the month, at least seven motorcyclists have died in crashes in Virginia. Well, staying in the Commonwealth, a Lorton man is in custody accused of shooting and killing his girlfriend. Allison Kate Laporta died after being shot inside a car late last night. Investigators say she was brought to the Mount Vernon Hospital by her boyfriend before she died. That boyfriend faces charges of first degree murder. He's being held without bond. And in the district, a man police say is spraying fire extinguishers while robbing convenience stores around Northeast D.C. strikes again. He's apparently hit three stores since Monday, the most recent happening this morning. Police say he's getting with cash registers and other items. If you recognize him, give police a call. Oh, we have new details tonight. A family getting to meet the Good Samaritan who rushed to pull a child from a burning car. Sure, this video may recall last week of the bishop jumping into action. This is on 495 in Prince George's County. Our Mario Carbone is at Johns Hopkins where a boy is being treated tonight. Take a look now at the emotional reunion. It was a moment filled with gratitude today as that family met Bishop John Adoteng Boteng. Standing just feet away from the hospital where that little boy is recovering, his grandparents hailed the man as a hero. This video and heroic act caught on camera, bringing a family to tears. Thank you for everything you have done to assist my family so that they can live. Brenda Roberts Nesbitt is Thank the grandmother so of five year old Aaron Nez Brown and mother to Sherrickon Roberts Brown. Roberts Brown was working last week driving a dump truck on 495 with her son in tow when a tire blew. The truck crossed traffic, crashed and burst into flames. The bystanders jumping into action to rescue the two. I'm still shaking. Today she and others met the man in the white suit, Bishop John Adoteng Boteng. He's an angel. Some people don't make it out of situations like that. I thank God that the child and the mom has a second chance to live their lives. Carrying a blue teddy bear, gifts and cards for the young boy, Bishop John prayed with the family, reflecting on that traumatic day. I pray that I remain in a child's life, that at some point at least I held him on my chest and comforted them. Both mother and son are being treated for burns and other serious injuries. The family says both are communicating, not verbally, but opening their eyes and nodding their heads. The family asking for continued prayer as they all heal. We ride past accidents every day, all day. It's crazy and you don't never know if it's going to be your family, your sister, your aunt, your uncle. And along with those prayers, the family says any type of support helps, even sending cards to help decorate the hospital rooms of that mother and son. Reporting in Baltimore, I'm Arielle Carbone, DC News Now. Yeah, what a day.